Christina, creator of the Sleep Sense program. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about timeout do's and don'ts. Now, first of all, I know that timeouts are a little bit controversial, I guess we could call it, or like people have opinions about timeouts. Some people think they're great and other people think they're not. And that's okay. If you don't like timeouts, don't do them. But if you want to try them as a strategy for curbing behavior with your toddler, then let me give you a few tips here today. I use timeouts with all of my children because I believe in consequences. I think that if you're behaving a particular way, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I have to consequence that behavior. I mean, I, I'm not prepared to just let children do whatever they please whenever they want. I guess that's, that's my take on the issue. But let's, let's first look at reasons why we would have to put a child into timeout. The reason why children misbehave or act out is usually due to a few things. It could be fatigue. I, try, I mean, everyone behaves poorly when they're fatigued, so it might be fatigue. It could be hunger. Children will often act out when they're, they're trying to manage the feeling of being hungry and it's overwhelming to them, or they're frustrated about something. It's not going their way. They can't get their shoe on. I mean, frustrations happen to all of us throughout the day or attention. Sometimes children will act out to get your attention because attention is attention to a child, whether it's coming positively or negatively, they'll usually take it either way. And so when you see, especially if you see a reappearing, you know, keeps coming up, the same behavior just keeps on playing out. Have a look at some of the re those reasons and see, you know, should we be offering snacks more frequently? Should we be using the Sleep Sense program to make sure this little one is taking great naps and sleeping through the night? That makes a huge difference on a child's behavior. Just getting the sleep they need, whew, that's a game changer. Are they getting overly frustrated with something? Am I expecting too much or maybe I need to redirect them in another direction? You know, if they're angry or frustrated because someone has a toy they want, well, can we move over here and look at this toy instead? Um, and can I carve out more one-to-one -one time with my child? Even 20 to 30 minutes a day of having some dedicated you and child time, no screens, no phone in your hand, just you and the child reading or coloring or playing with blocks or just doing some one-to-one -one things can make a huge difference in the way the child shows up and the way the child behaves. So troubleshoot first, always that, right? Before you move into anything else. But for example, my middle guy, God bless him, uh, he was a pretty chronic whiner for a period of time. He just, that was his go-to. It was like he just couldn't quite break that chain of like, this is what I do when I don't get what I want or I want what I want. I, I whine about it. Um, and so I always give a warning, right? Children need a warning. They need to, to understand that whatever's happening is not the appropriate way. So I would say, listen, that's one. And I would model how to ask nicely. You know, let's say he's asking for a cookie and he's whining. I would say, I'd like a cookie, please. Um, so I'm showing him how to course correct <laughs> at this point. Um, and sometimes he would and sometimes he wouldn't. And so if he didn't, then that's two. It's time out. Uh, I'm not a big fan of giving lots of warnings because I think that like children are smart they understand they know what a warning is you know if you if you do that again if i get to two uh you're going for time out if you're just introducing this let's explain the rules right that's one if i go if i get to two you're going to be having a time out um and they'll learn that right within a week they'll have mastered the fact that if she says one i, I have a decision to make here or i'm either going to course correct or I'm not, and I'm gonna go for a timeout. Um, and so let's say he didn't, and he would go for a timeout. So first of all, let's pick a timeout location, not the child's bedroom, not the child's crib or bed either. I want their bedroom to be a sanctuary for sleep and for play if they're old enough, but mainly sleep. And so I don't want a whole lot of negatives around the bedroom, around the crib, around the bed. I just think there's lots of other places to do timeout. So you could get a little chair, 
um, you know, I don't think you need to face them into the corner. We're not trying to humiliate a child. We're just trying to um, consequence a behavior. So get a mat or a chair or a step, you know, that's a timeout step they could go to um, for a period of time. I prefer if it's out of where you are. So if that means maybe you move to a different room or, or it's in a, its own room, um, because what I find, again, if it's an attention seeking behavior um, and they have, you know, you're st basically staring at them the whole time they're in timeout, that can be a reward in and of itself. So we do want to kind of like just move the child slightly, slightly out of view. Like we're not locking them in the door, like, you know, in the, in the, in the scary <laughs> pantry or anything like that. We're just moving them out of, out of the scene, right? Into a different location. And then we're setting a timer. Let's say we've got a three-year-old on our hands here. We're going to set a timer for three minutes. So a minute for every year the child has been on this earth is a great place to start. Now what happens often, especially when you're just establishing timeout, is that they'll get up, right? They don't know yet that they're going to have to stay in this chair until the timer goes, so they're going to get up and they're going to move off the chair. You just return them and now you start the timer again. And then they, you return them and you start the timer again and you return them and you start the timer again. And they will begin to understand that this isn't over until the buzzer rings. So you can sit in your chair until the buzzer rings or we can keep doing this until you decide to do that, right? And it's tough, it's a, hard, it's a bit of hard work to, to set the stage for this, like everything in parenting. Starting off is tough, um, but they will begin to understand that, hey, it just makes better sense to sit in the chair until the timer goes. It's faster that way, right, to get back at whatever I was doing than it is to keep, you know, getting up off this chair and we have to start again and again and again. So that's basically how you do it. You don't need to, once the buzzer rings, carry on with life. You don't need to sit down and have a heart to heart about how you hit, shouldn't hit Jimmy and if you hit Jimmy it makes him sad. You don't have to have a big, long, drawn out discussion about what the behavior was. Hopefully you've already made it clear that, you know, hitting anyone is not appropriate behavior, that you, you won't tolerate it. So they know what they did. They don't need to, you know, be reminded 60 times about what happened. So just move on with life. Off you go. A um, couple of questions about how to do it when you're out in public, right? That's a little trickier. You don't have your, your naughty chair or whatever you're calling it um, with you. So we use the car. You know, if we were in a restaurant and our kids started misbehaving um, one morning, right? One morning and, you, and you're having a timeout. If they didn't course correct, then one of us off to the car, right? Get that child to the car and put them in the car and now we set the timer for you know three minutes uh and you'll have a time out in the car that's where you'll go um and again i don't know I, I i never thought that parenting would be easier i doubt you thought that either so i get it but i don't i mean my dinner i don't want to get up and go to the car but i'll tell you especially with eating out we do this with our kids because we love to eat out and that's something I'm not willing to sacrifice just because my kids can't behave in the restaurant. I'm also not going to sit in the restaurant with kids who don't behave. So we did it and we went out for dinner at least once or twice a week and we took those kids to time out and we took turns as a, as a couple whose turn is it now to go do this time out thing and you know very well I mean nothing happens overnight but with time they learned how to behave appropriately in a restaurant. And we got compliments all the time about our children's behavior in the restaurant. People could, people, strangers would come over that had been sitting across the restaurant and tell us like how well behaved our kids were. And I smile and take a compliment, but they, they don't know all the hard work I had to do on the other end of this, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it. So I, I say, go for it, do, give a time out. Um, you don't have to let your anger get in the way. I think that's maybe one of the reasons people don't like timeouts is because it's somehow, it, it's based on your anger. It's, uh, hey, it's not my anger. It's, I gave you a warning to course correct your behavior. You, you chose not to, the child chose not to, and now I'm just consequencing that choice. That's what I'm doing. All right, thanks everybody for watching today. Sleep well.